Israelites to evil. And a lot of it is because of the background they live against. You see how the fellow there is coming and he blends in with his background. And human nature is a bit like that. Do you, do you find when you're chatting to somebody who's got a strong accent, do you find you start, <laughs> smiles around the room of recognition, you start kind of almost mimicking their accent a bit. And various ones of us do it to a different degree, you know, so, some do it really strongly. And uh, there are certain accents, if I'm talking to somebody with that accent, oh, I've got to be really careful. Because they'll think I'm taking the mickey. You know, it's very easy to do that, isn't it? We kind of blend because we're human. The Israelites are called by their God to live against the background of Canaan. They moved in there, and their lifestyle and their identity is threatened by that. Because things that go on in Canaan are not great. There's the ancient Canaanite peoples, of course. But then, there's the Philistine cities that have been established on, along the western seaboard. The Philistines settled over there on the coastal plain about 1200 BC, a generation or so after the Israelites entered the land of Canaan. And those Philistines got well established in their five cities, Gaza, Eshkelon, Ashdod, Ekron and Gath. And then they started to push into the hinterland, which is where the twelve tribes of Israel were to be found in their loose tribal league. These are not the traditional settled people of the land, the Amorites and the Ammonites, that have been getting dealt with so far in the book of Judges. The sort of aggressive people that previous eras of Judges have had to deal with. For Israel it was clear, they were aggressive, they were the enemy, they fought you, they came at you. You had to fight them back. It's not those people that Samson's dealing with. He's dealing with a new kid on the block, the sea peoples who come in, moved into an already threatening situation. And those Philistines, because of their cities and their urban way of life, they're increasingly hungry for arable land. Land like the stuff Samson, Samson's tribe, the Danites, are sitting on. And they want access to that land. But the threat from the Philistines to Israel is quite different. They're not just coming in with their swords and saying, give us your land. They come in with a different approach. They come in to trade. This is critically important. They come in in like a, a friendly sort of way. The nature of the threat from the Danites is, is one of appeasement. The old enemy was clearly opposed to you. They were vital and brutal. But the Philistines came towards you as people you could do business with. You could approach them. You could negotiate. You could trade. In fact, you didn't need to approach them because they appeared friendly and came towards you. And they offered you things that you wanted and thought you quite liked the look of. And, and you wouldn't want to seem odd or do anything to threaten this good relationship you're building with these people. And the challenge is to resist the insidious allure of appeasement. What's appeasement? Not rocking the boat. Don't push it to a conflict. Now if you're going to understand Samson, I know I've gone on a bit about this, if you're going to understand Samson, you've got to understand that that is what he's coming into. A situation where people have been insidiously drawn away from God. Quietly. Nicely, sweetly, drawn quietly away. It's not like the Canaanites, war, right? It's come and trade with us. It's a bit like um, <clears throat> the Anglo Saxons came into Britain, right, with swords. No, oh, fight, 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 okay? But the Vikings came into Britain primarily. We're going to trade, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And when we can't trade, then we'll nick stuff off you and go away. It's a different approach, do you see? And Samson came into that scene, and what Samson did was to throw down a marker. And that was a large part of what Samson is about. He's the one who dug in his toes in the midst of a compromised people, drew the line in the sand, and then defended it. He defended it alone, because nobody agreed. He's never got an army. He's never got a bunch of guys with him. Samson is the one man who's drawn the line in the sand, causing the aggravation that people then wake up to. Fight back. Does that make sense? That is the point of Samson. You remember what the point of Samson was? All those funny stories we're going to be looking at. There's the point of Samson. It's pushing things to the point where everybody can see. Oh boy, we've got to be standing up to this. There's an issue here. Now, Samson, even this passage of scriptures doesn't say that Samson ends the problem with the Philistines. He begins. 
to deal with the problem in the first place. And the threat's going to outlive him. And the era of the judges, and even the early days of the monarchy, up to the reign of, of well, the United Monarchy under King David, who finally deals with the first time. But Samson was the guy who took decisive action that ended the era of Philistine appeasement, pointed the issues, stirred up the hornet's nest, and so angered those powerful Philistines that appeasement and assimilation would no longer be an available option. That's the point of Samson. I know we've perhaps been through some of this, we talk the stories, yeah? and we think, what is the point of him? I mean, why is he doing that? Why is he marrying her? Why is he, you know, Joe Bonham ass? What's that about? He's pointing up. The drift that's taken place, the allegiances and the, and, and the treaties that have been made as it were. Samson is the guy who draws the line in the sand and defends it when nobody thanks him at all for doing so. They think he's just a troublemaker and a delinquent child for behaving in that way.